Whether you're walking, hiking, playing ball, or just enjoying the great outdoors, this park has it all. And Tucson Water celebrates a milestone that means more water for our desert community. These stories and more coming up on the next Tucson City News in Review. Hi, I'm Lane Mandel and welcome to Tucson City News in Review. For this show, we're at a special place, the Lincoln Regional Park on the city's southeast side. This is the Children's Outdoor Performance Area located next to the Clement Center Recreation Facility. It's a great place for weddings, family reunions, birthday parties, and it offers some amazing spots to take pictures. Here at Lincoln Park, there's a lot to enjoy. For example, check out this recreational venue. It's more than just a hit for top level teens. It also scores a home run for our economy. They say, if you build it, they will come. A few years later, on a warm spring day, the fields are being prepped. Right down to the last bit of chalk. And they're here. Having this complex built out here in uh, 2010 was a great thing. This one, this one actually provides a little more higher level play, so we're able to draw groups from out of town and out of state. The softball fields at Lincoln Park have been a hit for Division II and III NAA schools from across the country. Teams looking for relief from the cold weather. We don't really have much of an opportunity to play before we get down to Tucson, so this gives us an opportunity to see the players and, and see where we're at. One, two, three, action! This event is called the Tucson Invitational Games, and this is the softball leg of, of that event. There's a baseball portion to it also, but there's 55 teams who come here annually. And with that many ball players visiting comes hotels and restaurants and over nine and a half million dollars into our local economy. It may not be a home run, but it sure feels like a grand slam for Tucson's Lincoln Park. Recently, an event was held to celebrate Lincoln Regional Park's latest improvement, phase one of the master planned Atterbury Wash Greenway. Three, two, one, yay! Yeah. My name is Shirley Scott and I have been representing Ward 4 for the last 18 years. We're celebrating today another investment with Pima County bond money into a trail system that will ultimately, in the big plan, join the east side by walking to the west side. My name is Jason Butler. We're dedicating a public art project that I just did a lot of work on. I feel like he's just um, come through with all that he's promised. I built uh, 13 benches and three picnic tables. Uh, I worked with some school children from nearby schools to do some funky bird houses. Also, I did a few native bee habitat sculptures. I also did some, some work on some signs at the beginning and end of the project. Uh, and everything was designed to relate to kind of the wild, natural uh, aspect of this park. Been here about 27 years, and we've kind of watched all of this work being done. Well, the installation took a couple months. Uh, I was out here just a day or two a week, basically bolting things down, filling them with concrete, finishing it off. Come through, look at the pieces, appreciate them, use them. It's a beautiful facility. We like to get out and walk and uh, we thought we'd get out here. We live close by and it offers an opportunity to get out and walk and enjoy the fresh air and sunshine and get some exercise. And this is a great walk in the park. That's what this is. I welcome people to come out and take a look at this and enjoy this fresh air experience. Everyone in the city should appreciate and enjoy this new investment. Absolutely wonderful. A nice place you can sit and rest like we're doing right in the middle of a walk and it's, it's really nice. More people should come out and do this. When you think of parks, what comes to your mind? Swimming pools, playgrounds, ball fields, basketball courts? Well, here's someone whose top priority is the simple beauty of natural open space. 
I'm hearing this morning uh, the first Lucy's warblers that I've heard this season. Actually, if you, it's going to be hard to see, but if you want to get record this sound, this is a Lucy's warbler singing right there. When Tucson Audubon finishes their work along the Atterbury Wash at Lincoln Park on the city's east side, visitors to the area will be seeing a lot more birds. Over the years, urban development near the wash has damaged the natural flow of stormwater that nurtures the riparian habitat. I uh, hear quail, gambles quail. Morning dove singing over here somewhere. Oh, it, you see it there on the dead tree. That is a fabulous shrub. It's great cover for birds. They love to hide in there from predators. Great nesting opportunities. Kendall Crozen is a project manager for Tucson Audubon. With the help from the City of Tucson, the organization received a $390,000 grant from the Arizona Water Protection Fund Commission. The funds are being used to restore damaged areas along Atterbury by using rock dams and earth berms to slow down stormwater so it can spread out and sink into the soil. They're structured with larger rock on the downhill side and bigger uh, and smaller rock on the uphill side. Make sure the plant is upright as best you can. And then you bring down the sides of the hole to make a basin. In addition, contractors are planting hundreds of trees and shrubs to replace many that have been lost to soil erosion. And then, once you've got your plant in the ground, you can go ahead and give it some water. So, oh, look at that. We planted these um, maybe around a month ago the leaves are just starting to uh, leaf out again. Natural open space like this in public places like city parks is not just the site of a future ball field or a future pool or a future recreation center. It is a recreation asset in its own right. Kendall says the estimated economic impact of wildlife watching in Arizona, especially birds, is 1.5 billion dollars. And that's a huge pastime that people have. People love to do that. We need to keep places like Atterbury Wash and the other natural open space in Lincoln Park open so that wildlife can thrive and so that wildlife watchers can come out here and enjoy the birds and the bobcats and the coyotes and the javelinas. Oh, and right behind it, it's a cooper sock flying across the wash. Kendall hopes that the Atterbury Restoration Project at Lincoln Regional Park is a good demonstration of what can be done to help heal damaged washes and restore the natural desert ecosystem. There's no doubt that parks provide a great return on our investment. And speaking of investing, think about this story the next time you decide to turn on the tap. In Avra Valley, west of the Tucson Mountains, state and local officials and Tucson Water employees gathered to celebrate an important milestone, the delivery of the one millionth acre foot of Colorado River water. Here at Tucson Water's Clearwater Renewal Resource Facility, the water will be recharged and stored underground for future use by Tucson Water customers. With 20 basins like this, covering a total of 535 acres, the city is able to utilize its full yearly allocation of CAP water, over 144,000 acre feet. And what's so important about the recharge program is that it's really allowed us to find a way to raise our water table. And we're in a desert that's unheard of in most places in this country. Since 1999, Tucson Water has invested $244 million to build Clearwater, which today supplies over 70% of the city's demand for water. Not only do these facilities provide our water on a day-to-day -day basis, this is also our future. We're storing excess water that we don't need today under the ground in times of shortage on the river or if the canal, the CAP canal, were to go down for some reason we can live off of that water until the system is back up and running again. So it serves both an immediate 
uh, need and also future needs as well. Over the next 10 years, Tucson Water plans to invest an additional $165 million at Clearwater to ensure the reliability of Tucson's water supply. Finally, let's take a quick look back at an annual celebration that honors some of our community's human resources. If you've had any association with the city or county, you might recognize some of these special women who work so hard to make a difference. You can be anything you want to be. That was the theme of the third annual Women in Government Awards. The event highlights women in government who go beyond the call of duty with their talents and skills in their service to the community. This month enables us to honor the contributions of the many women who have demonstrated superb leadership and service to and on behalf of the City of Tucson and Pima County. We couldn't do our work without the women who, who are the ones that actually get the work done. Last year's Leadership Award went to this year's keynote speaker, Captain Carla Johnson, who pointed out recent victories for women. Another victory occurred yesterday when President Obama signed expanded protections for domestic violence victims into law. <laughs> Under the renewed Violence Against Women Act. These wins, however, don't mean that our work is finished. That is why the Pima County Tucson Women's Commission is so important to the old Pueblo. It is why recognition of exemplary performance makes a difference. The women we honor today our pioneers, our nominees, our winners, are our role models and our inspiration. They are the people who show that yes, women can do that and that and that and that. And they do it exceptionally well. These women are our movement forward, they are our momentum. It is my hope that someday soon, when parents tell their daughters, honey, you can be anything you want when you grow up that they will be speaking the truth. This year, Jing Lo and Laura Baker were recognized for their outstanding leadership. And it makes you feel, one, proud to be a public servant, and it just makes you um, realize that together we can accomplish so many things. And hopefully the takeaway is, is that as we open those doors and educate, I say, the community and one another, that anyone can do anything that they set their mind to as long as they have the will, the compassion, and drive to get it done, um, anything's possible. Oh. Deputy Chief Baker was one of over 100 honorees nominated by their peers throughout the workforce of Tucson and Pima County. Congratulations to all of our honorees. That wraps it up for this edition. I'm Lane Mandel for Tucson 12. And I'll see you next time on Tucson City News in Review.